the BBC is to get tougher scrutiny on their online content over concerns about bias within the organisation. And that's according to Lucy Fraser, who has said audiences think the corporation is not sufficiently impartial. The culture secretary was also asked about GB News during her appearance on Radio 4 this morning. Let's turn to uh, another part of the broadcasting landscape, which is GB News. Um, while loss-making, GB News has built a, a significant following both on linear TV and online. Would you agree with the assertion that it has transformed our broadcasting landscape? I'm in favour of media plurality and what that means is that there's a wide variety of views across um, uh, uh, out there for people to watch and listen to so that audiences uh, can find the views that they want to hear and GB News is an important part of that landscape. It's decided to be regulated by Ofcom as indeed many other broadcasters have but I think it's really important that we have that uh, variety of views. There we go, the BBC are criticised and they criticise GB News. Textbook. So join me now as former Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport, Nadine Doris. Welcome to the show, Nadine. Superb to have you yeah. on. So this must be like Groundhog Day for you. Um, here we are again, Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser saying the BBC must adapt, reform or risk losing the trust of the audience it relies upon. You've been saying this for years. Do you think the BBC is completely broken? Yeah, and sadly, what's been announced today is just too little, too late. And it's no coincidence that it's been announced just when we're in an election year. But of course, there's very little time to put anything into practice or into place. What's happened now, just to be clear, is legally, and under the bindings of the Royal Charter, the midterm review has to be launched. And what you had today was to coincide with the launch of the midterm review, because it'd be quite bizarre to launch the midterm review of the BBC Royal Charter without any announcements to accompany it. But I think what is more important and what was said today really covers up is this. There was a review that was due to be launched about how the BBC is funded and the BBC licence fee. And that was delayed by Rishi Sunak over and over. It was mm. blocked when he was Chancellor. He actually said to me, no, you can't do this because it's a taxation policy and taxation policy is the Treasury. It isn't a taxation policy, mm. but he blocked and blocked it. And last, a few weeks ago in December, on a busy news day, the government slipped out onto its website that it has launched the review. But it said the review would be undertaken by an independent panel of experts, and they have yet to announce who that is. Mm. I think the most important thing that we can deduce from that today is despite all these other announcements, with no backup as to when it's happening and how the accountability is going to be displayed, how we're going to, we going to know that Ofcom are holding the online mm. presence of the BBC the social media. Subscribe. The most important thing is this. But as a result of the government holding up that review of the BBC licence fee, the licence fee is here to stay. Because there is no way, I was told when I was culture secretary, it would take at least three years to bring a change about. They have deliberately stalled until now, until it is therefore not possible to change the BBC funding model. So the BBC licence fee is here to stay and it will continue to rise and people will, 3,500 prosecutions a month are mm. taking place, people will still be prosecuted, the most vulnerable people, for non-payment of the licence fee. That is the shocking piece of news about the BBC. That's not what anyone is talking about and that's what's being buried, if you like, by this window dressing today of the fact that Ofcom will be holding the BBC to account for its online content. Yeah, and of course you referred to a report in yesterday's Sunday Times, Nadine, three and a half thousand a month licence fears are being, are being prosecuted, often in closed courts without any chance of representation, including disabled people, those in wheelchairs who just missed a single payment, and indeed people that paid their payments for them may themselves have been through bereavements. This paints a picture, doesn't it, Nadine, of, of, of a heartless, uncaring organisation only intent on making profit at any cost. Yeah, and I think it's um, it's it's a, the problem with the BBC. It is a huge organisation, and it's grown beyond its own ability to control itself and to regulate itself. It's got too big. 
And, you know, when you have large organisations, whether it's the BBC or the NHS, that a, a culture develops and a culture grows. And it becomes, the culture becomes so huge that it doesn't matter who you've got at the top, they just can no longer. It becomes a monster, mm. and it's a monster they can't control. And that is what has happened with the BBC. And, you know, those 3,500 prosecutions per month, 76% of those are women. And why is that? Mm. It's because women quite often take responsibility for household bills, particularly those in single parent households. They're the women who take responsibility and pay the bills, and they're the ones who are being prosecuted. And it's, you know, it doesn't matter how often I come on TV stations like yours or how often I write about it in my column of the Daily Mail, it still continues to just roll on as it is. Nothing takes place. And it's to change the process and, and that's what we're stuck with now. We're stuck with the BBC licence fee. We've probably got an incoming Labour government. It will never change. The licence fee will continue to have to pay more for it. And the BBC, will, Ofcom's best efforts, will continue just as it is. Uh OK, Nadine, you say it will never change, but a lot of people do want it to change, and you're one of them. In fact, in 2022, you were saying the current model is completely outdated and the, BBC, the Ofcom should hold the BBC to account and we need a completely new way of funding the BBC. What would you like to see happen? So the review, which I had ready to go on the day Boris Johnson was, we were ready to launch that the following week, um, should have been launched years ago. I mean... What I want to see happen has been timed out. Um, I mean, if we get a Conservative government next time, then maybe we can go again. But I can promise you that an incoming Labour government will do nothing to reform the BBC in any substantial way that will impact on individuals paying the licence fee or in having to listen to content which lacks impartiality. You know, the Dyson review, which took place well, three, four years ago now, found the BBC lacked impartiality. The BBC launched its own 10-point impartiality plan in response to the Dyson review to address those issues. We've just had the Hamas-Israeli conflict did we see that 10-point impartiality plan playing through when the presenters refused to call Hamas a terrorist organisation? No, we didn't. And so it has made no difference. And I'm afraid, it, you know, it frustrates me. And I had the full backing of the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, in launching the review of the BBC licence fee and in finding an innovative way of funding the BBC without losing those core functions of the BBC, which are important. You know, it is important to say the BBC is a beacon of broadcasting across the globe. Without losing those core functions, how could we how could we make it better value for people in the UK who are having to pay ever-increasing costs? I had his full backing, um, but I didn't have the backing of the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, and it doesn't appear that the people have the backing of Rishi Sunak now because this is just window dressing and the BBC licence fee is here to stay. Superb. Great food for thought. Nadine Doris, former Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Thank you for joining us on GB News. Superb stuff.